Good day, my dear grade 9 students. Welcome to MAPI 9. I am Ms. Donabel Asmana, your MAPI teacher for this academic year. Before we begin our class, let us have a moment of silence for our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen to our lesson. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord. Amen. All right, once again, good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you're all ready for today's discussion. All right, so is everyone present today, Ms. Secretary? Is everyone present? Okay, very good. Everyone seems to be present. But before we start, may I remind everybody to please find a comfortable seat and seat properly. Clean up your table, put away any distractions for a while, and of course, listen very carefully. Can you do that? All right, I guess everyone's ready. If you're re really ready, who among you can recall what we have discussed last meeting? Anyone? Can anyone recall our topic last meeting? Good job. We talk about community and environmental health. So in there, we discuss about the characteristics of a healthy community, the programs that should be given to us for free, and of course, the issues um, in our community that need immediate action. So for today class, we will proceed to another topic. But before that, let us have a quick activity which I call News Bulletin. All right, so what is this all about? All you have to do here is to read the news headlines that will be flashed on the screen and then classify them whether they refer to intentional or unintentional injuries. I'm pretty sure you've heard about um, the words intentional and unintentional in your English subject, right? Are you familiar with those words? Yes? All right. Good job. Are you ready? Ready. Then let's have a short practice. So the, this is the first news headline. Estudiante, nagpakamatay matapos mabuli. All right. That is the first headline. What do you think is the answer? Intentional or unintentional? Okay, yes, Mia. What do you think is the answer? That's correct. That is uh, intentional. Okay, good job, Mia. You're the first to enter, enter the correct answer, but no point yet since this is only a practice. So let us move on to our first official headline. This time, again, the first to enter the correct answer will have a point. So are you all ready? Okay, great. Here is your first news headline. All right. A neopite patay sa hazing. Okay, what do you think is that? Intentional or unintentional? Okay, the correct answer is intentional. Congratulations, Ken. You got the point for this uh, for the first news headline. Let us proceed to our second headline. Get ready. Here's another headline. Isang doktor patay matapos tamaan ng COVID-19. What do you think is the correct answer? Is that intentional or unintentional? Okay, let's see the answer. Unintentional. Great job, Lee. You got the point for the second round. The answer is unintentional. Get ready for our third headline. Okay, bata nalunod sa baha. What do you think is that? Intentional or unintentional? Okay, let us see the answer. The answer is 
unintentional. Very good, Kim. You get the point for the third round. The correct answer is unintentional. Let us see, class. We'll get the last one. Get ready, keyboard warriors. Here's the last news headline. Okay. Police na ambush dalawa patay tatlo sugatan. What do you think is the answer? Intentional or unintentional? All right, Sam, you got the point for the last round. The correct answer is intentional. Congratulations, everyone. You all did a great job decoding all the words. For those who don't get uh, get points rather for this activity don't worry because later on we will be having another one so make sure you listen carefully to our discussion so you will be able to answer the questions that i will be giving you may also bring out your notebook and pen so that while i am discussing the lesson you'll be able to jot down the details of our topic now can someone explain to me how you classified each news headline, how did you distinguish between intentional and unintentional injuries? Okay, so here's our word recall, intentional and unintentional. Yes, Clara, how did you distinguish them? Intentional and unintentional. Very good. Clara said that she learned from her English subject that when we say intentional, something is done willingly or voluntarily, while unintentional means unplanned or not done on purpose. Based on our game and Clara's explanation, what do you think is our topic for today? Anyone? What do you think is our topic for today? Very good. It has something to do with intentional and unintentional injury. So class specifically, um, we will differentiate intentional and unintentional injuries, analyze the risk factors related to intentional injuries, identify protective factors related to intentional injuries, and of course, demonstrate ways to prevent and control intentional injuries injuries. Now, let us start our discussion by differentiating unintentional and intentional injuries. When we say an, uh, intentional injuries, these are the injuries that is caused mainly by accident. And that is something or things that we don't expect to happen. For example, um, any ve uh, vehicle accidents or suffocation or drowning like this, what else, poisoning or fire or burns, etc. Well, when we say intentional injuries from the word intention, it means you have an intention to hurt yourself or other people have an intention to hurt you, not by accident, but because they intend to do it. And that's an example, bullying. So in this lesson class, we will focus on the different intentional injuries. Intentional injuries are injuries resulting from violence. It can be divided into two. The first one is self-inflicted. So this is when a person harms him or herself on purpose. Okay, again, when we say self-inflicted, this is when we harm ourselves on purpose. Examples are suicide and parasuicide, which we will discuss later. The second one is assault. So what is assault? Um, this is when a person or other persons harm another on purpose, all right? It can be committed within the family, those that were committed by peers and by other groups. Now, let us talk about the conceptual framework for this intentional injuries. Let us identify what are these intentional injuries and later on, we will talk on the ways to prevent and control them. So just like what I've mentioned earlier, be ready because we will have another game as we go on to our discussion. So the next game would be very easy class because all you have to do is to identify the types of intentional injuries based on the given picture. So now, keyboard warriors, are you ready? All right, let's start with the first one. What do you think is this? Okay, Tamara, that is correct. She already has an answer, and the answer is suicide. That's correct. So this is 
um, suicide and parasuicide. I am pretty sure, class, you're familiar with suicide, right? How about parasuicide? Do you know what parasuicide is? No? Okay, let us discuss them one by one. Class, suicide, as we all know, is the intentional faking of one's own life. And many of those who attempt suicide um, do not receive, uh, receive rather mental and emotional counseling for their families. Um, for their families try to hide the problem because they are ashamed of it. Oftentimes, um, suicide is a source of shame. Because of this, the problem is not solved and the attempt to commit suicide happens again. On the other hand, a suicide attempt in which a person does not intend to die is called parasuicide. It is often a cry for help, meaning the person wants others to know that he or she, uh, uh, about what he or she is feeling. And despite this class, despite this, parasuicide should be taken seriously because it may lead to death, okay? Next picture we have, what do you think is that? All right, good job. That is domestic violence. Can anyone tell me what uh, is this all about? Yes, Ria, what is domestic violence? All right, nice try. When we say the domestic violence, it is an act that includes physical assault or abuse like hitting or pushing or shoving, etc. We also have sexual abuse or any unwanted or forced sexual activity. And of course, the verbal abuse. These are behaviors that are used by one person. For example, in a relationship or in a marriage who tries to control the other or his or her partner. How about this one? It usually happens at school, so I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar about this. What do you think is that? That is correct. That is, that is bullying. And that is an unwanted aggressive behavior. And the... Behavior is repeated or can be repeated over time. And, you know, both kids who are bullied and the one who bully others may have serious and lasting problems. I have here four classifications of bullying. Number one is social bullying or sometimes referred to as, as relational bullying. This means hurting someone's reputation or relationships. It includes telling or uh, uh, telling other children not to be friends with someone or spreading rumors about someone or embarrassing someone in public. Another one is verbal bullying or saying or writing mean and nasty things. It includes uh, thissing or name calling or making inappropriate sexual um, comments or taunting and of course threatening to cause harm. Another one is, the third one is physical bullying or hurting a person's uh, body or destroying his or her possessions, which includes hitting or kicking or pinching, spitting, what else, stripping, or of course, breaking someone's things or um, making mean or rude hand gestures to someone. And last but not least, we have the cyberbullying or any verbal or social bullying. Um, that is done online through the use of technology and electronic means, all right? It includes using social media like we have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or even TikTok, or, uh, which includes sending or posting or sharing negative or harmful or false or mean comment or content about someone else. It can be, include sharing uh, personal or private information, um, about someone else causing embarrassment or humiliation. Now, let us move on to the next picture. What do you think is that? Right, that is stalking. Our stalking class is a pattern of behavior that make you feel afraid or nervous or harassed or in danger. It is, some, uh, it is when someone repeatedly contacts you or follows you, sends you things and talks to you even when you don't want them to. So it is very threatening to the person being stalked because the behaviors and actions of the stalker often invade uh, your privacy. And stalking behaviors involve actions such as Please know this class because it might happen to you, such as knowing your schedule, showing up at places you go to, sending emails and pictures, 
calling or texting you repeatedly, contacting you or posting about you on social networking sites like Facebook or Twitter, and uh, damaging your property. What else? Creating websites about you, sending gifts, stealing things that belong to you, or any actions to contact, to harass, or to track, or to frighten you. That is stalking. All right. Next, we have the next one is what is this? Is that test? Hold up or robbery? Well, it could be. In general, that's what we call extortion. That is the act of using force or threats to force people to hand over their money or property on favors. Extortion class can happen outside or, for example, in our case, near our school, wherein um, you are victimized to give up your allowance in exchange for promise that you will not be beaten up. That is an example of extortion. The A class is different from robbery, which I have mentioned, and you have uh, mentioned a while ago. This is a very real and um, very, when we say um, robbery class, that is a very real and very immediate violence. In extortion, a person may only suffer from the fear of harm if he or she gives um, into the demands of the one who extorts, okay? How about, how about the next one? What do you think is this? Yes, Mar? All right, that is correct. Violence, or it has something to do with gang and youth violence. A gang class is defined as a relatively tough and mostly street-based group or young people who regard themselves and may be seen by others as a, as a group that engages in a range of criminal activity and violence. So oftentimes, they are in conflict with other similar gangs. And young people join gangs and groups for lots of reasons. What do you think are those? One of these class is their need to be to be belong, be included, or be part of a group they can identify themselves with. And this is oftentimes true for those who do not feel a sense of belongingness or care at home. Uh, so this is the next picture. What do you think is that? Yes, Lee. Hazing, yes, that could be because um, hazing happens in an illegal fraternity and other related violence. So a fraternity class is a group of people with similar um, backgrounds and occupations or interests. And uh, the youth may think of several benefits in joining a fraternity, and they may see it as a gain of power and protection, as fraternities have a reputation for being a powerful group. So class, many of these fraternities are based in school and colleges and universities, and some would join for academic support. However, it is not easy to join fraternities since fraternity members would require an applicant to undergo series of initiation rites to become part of the brotherhood. One of these is hazing, which I have mentioned a while ago, or activities that involve harassment or abuse or humiliation. Hazing can be very dangerous um, as the applicants will be subjected to physical and psychological suffering, like being beaten with wooden paddles like this, which may cause them lots of injuries, and some even die in the process. That is why physical hazing class is prohibited. That is prohibited under Republic Act 8049. 8049, also known as the anti-hazing law. Now, let us move on to the next picture. This is pretty easy. And yes, you're correct, Nia. That is kidnapping. And we also have here abduction. What do you think is the difference between kidnapping and abduction? Anyone? No one knows? Okay. So when we say kidnapping, that is taking away or forcefully moving a person against his or her will and holding him or her in unjust captivity. So the act is usually done for a motive like getting a monetary reward or ransom or getting some sort of benefit from a person or their family. Abduction class is the use of deceit or force in order to take a person or a child away from their home or relatives. So in abduction, the victim 
um, usually knows or ha has some sort of relation with the abductor. Okay? All right. Moving forward, uh, let us proceed to the last picture. What do you think is this? Yes, Ken. And that is correct. Sexual abuse. Uh, this are there are three forms of uh, sexual abuse it could be incest molestation and rape so when we say incest class that, that is a se sexual contact between um persons who are so closely related that a marriage between them is considered legal for example parents and their children or uncles and aunts with their nieces nephews etc molestation is the sexual abuse of a person by an adult okay for sexual pleasure or for profit and when we say rape that is a for sexual intercourse a sexual act um may also be considered if it satisfy any of the following criteria listen very carefully one or both people are not old enough to consent which means one of them are below or one of them is below 18 years old that's one number two one of them does not have the capacity to consent meaning for example they have the they do not have the right mental and legal capacity to consent okay for example, with mental disability or people who have been drugged or unconscious. And number three is that one of them did not agree to take part, which means the rapist might use a physical force or threat to force the victim to have intercourse with him or her. All right. Are there any clarifications or questions so far before we continue? Nothing, none. All right, let's proceed before we end our discussion. I'd like to share with you the ways on how we can prevent and control intentional injuries. I also want you to, um, to think of ways on how you can save yourself from these um, injuries and what you, can you do to help others. All right, and later we will have an activity regarding that. So class, for your information, here are some strategies strategies that may stop intentional or inflict self-inflicted intentional injuries. Again, when we say self-inflicted, these are uh, suicide and para-suicide. Class, the key to suicide prevention is to act fast and take the suicide attempt seriously. Another, a simple yet effective way is to communicate, to speak to the person um, if you're worried that he or she will attempt suicide. It may feel awkward and uncomfortable to talk. Yes, I get that. But anyone who shows indications and warning signs needs immediate help. And the sooner you respond, the better. All right? In this case, you may express... Um, uh, your concern for the people or for the person who wants to attempt suicide by saying, I wanted to check up on you because you haven't been yourself lately. Or you may also ask questions like, did something happen that made you start feeling this way? Or you may also offer your help by saying, I may not be able to understand exactly how you feel, but I care about you and I want to help you. So those are examples. On the other hand, here are some things to consider for cases of assault and abuse. First one is body language. Making direct eye contact and using a strong voice are some um, actions that can send off a message to the attacker that you are aware of how to take care of your safety safety and that you will not be victimized so easily. The second one is intuition. Class one important rule is that if you sense that something is wrong or about to happen, you should immediately get away, okay? And of course, the last one, this is very important, a self-protective attitude. Most important of all, you must realize that you are worthy and have the right to be treated with respect. So class being safe is your right but it is also your responsibility. Another one in cases of uh, assault and abuse, in order to prevent becoming a victim of assault, one important consideration is knowing proper self-defense techniques, which involve physical, mental, and emotional assertiveness. We should have a self-esteem. What do you mean by a self-esteem? That's having self-confidence that will make you less likely to be chosen as an easy target. 
Okay, that's self-esteem, having the confidence. Second is assertiveness. Having a bold and confident behavior like speaking with conviction may prevent a physical um, attack since many attackers want easy victims. They can overpower quickly saying forcefully phrases like, leave me alone, and that may surprise an attacker before he or she can make a move. So before we end this, this discussion, always remember, class, that injuries will always expose you to harm, especially those um, intentionally committed by other people. And most are big violent actions that are considered crimes because um, of the damage to the victims, not only to your properties, but most especially to their, their personal well-being and their physical, mental, social, emotional, moral, and spiritual health are, of course, greatly affected. And these effects will not simply go in time. Worst of all, this might even drive the victims to inflict harm on themselves. So as an adolescent class, always remember that you are protected by the government so don't be afraid. You will be protected by the government through the different legislations and government agencies. Okay. And um, however, it is still your responsibility to be able to protect yourself from the violent actions and behaviors that cause intentional injuries. You should also be aware of what to do in case you experience this. You should know whom to trust if you are exposed to dangers of intentional injuries or the authorities to report like the police to once you are victimized. But remember, remember, in injury prevention and safety from intentional injuries are still your responsibility or, and of course, should be your priority. Further, there is a need to emphasize the importance of promoting a culture of nonviolence. That's why we are discussing this class because I don't want you to be a contributor to violence and abuse. All right, is that clear? Do you have any questions so far before we end? Do you have a questions? Okay, very good. I hope that you listen attentively in our discussion because like what I said earlier, we will be having an assessment to know if you really learn something from today's lesson. In this assessment, I will be using again class what I like to call recitation wheel. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that. And basically, I'll just be asking questions from our discussion and the wheel will determine who will answer the particular question. You will be selected randomly and if you are able to answer it correctly, then you will get a point. If the if the given answer is wrong, then the wheel will spin again to select another student to answer. But before that, allow me to show you this. This activity class is called um, I Think, I Feel, and I Do. So you will be asked to, uh, uh, to answer three questions for each one situation that I will, be that I will flash on the screen. The first question is, what are you thinking? The second one is, what are you feeling? And the last question is, what will you do? Okay, please remember these questions. Please jot it down. And I'll now show you the scenarios. And, and I want you to internalize, to think of it thoroughly. Because next meeting, during our review, I will ask each one of you to share your thoughts about each scenario by answering three questions I have presented earlier. All right, is that clear? You may jot down the scenarios, okay? The first scenario is you notice that your classmate has scars on his arms. They look like blade marks. When you confronted him, he told you that it was only a tripping. Now, the question is, what do you think or what are you thinking? What are you feeling and what will you do? Okay. Next one, a trio of students regular, regularly obliga a new student to give them his lunch. The student in question does not report the situation, fearing reprisal. So the question again is, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? And what will you do? Third scenario, you saw your classmate outside the school extorting money from a younger student. 
Again, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? And what will you do? So think about the class. Next meeting, we will talk about your answers. You have to share your answers to the class. Going back to our activity, now may I now present to you our recitation wheel. Are you ready? All right, the first question will be answered by let us spin the wheel. And let us click stop. Okay, it will be art. Your question art is, okay, below are some of the stalking behaviors. Which of them does not belong to the group? A, knowing your schedule. B, calling or texting you repeatedly. C, showing up at the places you go to. Or D, embarrassing someone in public. What do you think is the answer? All right, that is correct. Letter D, embarrassing someone in public. Next question, let us spin the wheel. And it will be answered by, oh, Art again. Let's spin the wheel again. And okay, what else? Mia, all right. Mia, here's your question. Which of the following statements is not true about verbal abuse? A, verbal abuse is dangerous. B, verbal abuse is controlling. C, verbal abuse boosts self-confidence of a person. Or D, verbal abuse is hurtful and usually attacks the nature and abilities of the person. What do you think is the correct answer? All right, that is correct. Verbal abuse boosts self-confidence of a person. That is not true. Next, let us spin the wheel once again. And the lucky student is... Okay, me again and Mar. Okay, let us try Mar. This is the, the question. When a person is taken away for, forcefully against his or her will, what type of intentional injury is it? A, abduction, B, extortion, C, kidnapping, or D, parasuicide? What do you think is the answer? Is that A? Okay, that is correct. C, kidnapping. Next Next, let's proceed to the next question and let's spin the wheel once again and click stop. Okay, it's art again. Stop. Another. Okay, Ken, this is your question. Before a teenager can join in a fraternity, he will undergo initiation rites. What do you call this initiation rites for a neophyte? A, blessing, B, commencement, C, enshrinement, or D, hazing? This is pretty easy. Okay, that is correct. That is hazing. Okay, last, I think this will be the last question. Let us spin the wheel once again. And it's Ken again. Yes, Kim. The question is yours. This is the last question. If a person commits suicide but does not intend to die, what intentional injury is it? A, bullying, B, hazing, C, homicide, or D, parasuicide. What do you think? Okay, good job. The correct answer is parasuicide. Okay, so that is it, everyone. Congratulations, students. I hope you learned something today. But before we end, I want to share with you your activity entitled Message for a Violence free world okay so we still have time so you'll do this asynchronously okay all you have to do is to write an essay with the title promoting a culture of nonviolence" on your worksheet or any paper then or you may do it in word online and then answer the questions that follow so here are the guide questions how will you promote a culture of nonviolence? that's one number two do you think what you have written is effective? Why or why not? And number three, do you think it is achievable? Why or why not? So you have to refer to the rubrics below for your guidance on how your output will be assessed.
Okay, so we have three criteria. Number one is content. Number two, supporting information. And three, neat, neatness. So excellent, three points, two points for good, and one for needs improvement. So for content, it should be addresses the essay's topic for three points. Content is not enough of addressing the essay's topic for two points. And content does not address the essay's topic for one point. Next, supporting information. All facts included in the essay are supported by pro probable information. That's three points. Some facts included in the essay are not supported by probable information. That's four two points. And no facts included in the essay are su supported by probable information for one point. Next, for neatness, all opinions in the essay include enough related information for the reader to understand why an opinion is held. I think that is not neatness class. I'm so sorry. I'll just change the, the rubrics on the third column, but I want you to um, do it neatly with no erasure, okay? So later, I will resend the rubrics and criteria, all right? So you have to do this in a clean sheet of paper and you may send your answers via Google Classroom. Plus, you may also post this to your Facebook account if you want to, just to raise awareness and of course, to keep your friends informed about the importance of a violence-free world, okay? Just tag me when you do. Just tag me at Donable Ismana once you posted it. But that is not compulsory. Only if you are comfortable. If not, that is okay. Is that clear? All right, that's very clear, very good. For your assignment class, um, I'd like you to conduct a very short FGD or focus group discussion with your group mates and create your own safety pledge. This is the template and that will be presented next meeting. So um, we promise to keep ourselves safe and ready from the dangers of intentional injuries by practicing the following preventive measures. So this is a group activity and you may write as many as 10 preventive measures depending on you. And again, that will be presented next meeting. Do you have any questions regarding the activities, regarding the lessons? None. If none, let us end this meeting with a closing prayer. All right. Again, um, dear Lord, thank you that you promised us that when two or more come together in your name, you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us throughout this lesson and that you are with us right now. Inspire us as we leave this meeting to love and serve you always. In the name of Jesus, amen. Again, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, I guess that ends our lesson for today. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.